Hey guys, so today I'm using Fred here to help me introduce the bones of the body. We're going to start with the axial skeleton, which is going to include pretty much everything except for our appendages, and then we'll move on to talk about our appendages. So today's just an introduction into these different types of bones in the human skeletal structure, um, so stay tuned for more detailed information. So our skull is going to rest at the top of the spinal column and have two main parts, the cranium and the face, and its role is to protect the brain. Now, um, within the axial skeleton, there are 80 total bones in an adult and 87 in a child. The reason the ch children have more is because later on in adult life certain bones will fuse together. Now the skull itself has 22 bones and the cranium has eight. Again this is going to enclose and protect the brain and going to provide certain attachments for muscles. Now the facial skeleton has 14 total bones and it's going to allow for the shape of the face and allow for an attachment site for muscles. Remember we have a lot of muscles surrounding our face. Now our auditory ossicles are some of the smallest bones in the body or include some of the smallest bone in the body, the incus, the malleus, and the stapes. Within the auditory ossicles, we have six bones total, three per ear. Now the hyoid bone is the only bone that doesn't directly articulate with another bone in the body. It's going to serve as a movable base for the tongue and it's going to be horseshoe, horseshoe shaped. Now since we're looking at Fred's anterior side, we're not seeing quite all of the vertebrae, but the vertebrae are very important. So we're going to have three main types of vertebrae. Uh, our cervical vertebrae, which sometimes are abbreviated as C, our thoracic vertebrae, lumbar, and of course the sacrum and the coccyx at the very bottom. Now our cer cervical vertebrae, or also known as our C-spine, are going to include seven different bones, and the first two bones are called the atlas and the axis. As we move down, we get into our thoracic vertebrae, of which there are 12. These are larger than cervical, um, and there's going to be more stress from increased body weight, and each going to have a long pointed sort of uh, spinous process, um, and each is going to articulate and rub on the other. And then we have our lumbar vertebrae down here, and our lumbar vertebrae are going to be adapted to support more weight, a large, allowing for larger, stronger bodies. Now our sacrum is at the base of the vertebrae. It's going to be a triangular base. You can't quite see it on Fred here, because the camera's too high, but I'll show you in a second. And what happens is there's four other vertebrae that gradually fuse between 18 and 20, 30 years of age. Um, and of course our coccyx is going to be our tailbone um, at the very bottom of our vertebrae skeleton. Now if we spin Fred back around, come here, okay. So let's talk about our thoracic cage. This includes 25 bones. Um, the ribs, they're going to be 12 pair for a total of 24, and there's going to be one set of ribs attached to each uh, thoracic vertebrae. So remember, the ribs are attached to the thoracic vertebrae. The first seven pairs of ribs we call true ribs because they're going to directly connect to our sternum here. Um, and then the last five pairs of ribs are going to be called false ribs because they don't uh, reach the sternum directly. Now there's cartilage that connects some of them, um, but not in the same way as our uh, vertebra sternal ribs. Now this is our sternum here, um, and if you knock on your chest you can hear yourself hitting your sternum right there. Um, it's going to be one bone in total but composed of three main parts. We have our upper manubrium here, we're going to have our middle body here, and then of course the xiphoid process which is this tiny part right here, and there's actually a suture, you can see it on Fred if you look up close. Now, if you are administering CPR, sometimes they encourage you to push really, uh, really deeply, about an inch deep, and sometimes that can cause either some of the ribs to crack, uh, which means you're doing it right, or this piece, the xiphoid process, if you're not doing it right, can break off, which can cause further damage to the body. Um, so what you want to do is make sure you're pressing on the upper part of the sternum here, and not going to break off that xiphoid process if you're doing CPR. Hmm. All right, so now we're getting into our appendicular skeleton. So when you talk about this, we're talking about our appendages and the things that support those appendages. So first we have our pectoral girdle, and this is going to include the clavicle here, which is going to help hold our shoulders in place, and then also the two scapula here and here. The most commonly broken bone in the body is actually the clavicle here, because it's very easy to fall and crack your clavicle, and this happens a lot in older people as well as in children. So. Fun fact, most commonly broken bone in the body, the clavicle. Now I forgot to mention that the appendicular skeleton has 126 bones. So there's actually more bones in our appendages ooh, than in our axial skeleton, the center part of our skeleton. So um, let's talk about our upper limb. So first we have our humerus here, which is gonna insert into the glenoid cavity. And then that is attached to the radius and the ulna. So let's make sure you guys can see this. This is going to be our radius and our ulna here. Now, the radius is going to be able to rotate freely. The ulna is a little bit longer than the radius. And then we move on to our carpals. So right now we're going to take a closer look at the bones of our skeleton's hand. Now we're going to start with the carpals here. Again, these are small bones uh, that are going to 
there's going to be eight per hand. Um, and so there's a bunch of interesting names for them. So these are technically your rich or your wrist bones. Um, so here, uh, right here, we're going to have our trapezium. Uh, this little bone is our trapezoid. Let's make sure you guys can see. Good. <laughs> trapezoid. This larger one is your scaphoid. Then we have under here, under our middle finger, we're going to have our cavity. And then here, this is our lunate bone. Make sure you guys can see okay. And then up here, we're going to have our hamate. And then here we have our triquartal tri bone. And then finally, this little bone here is our pisiform. Now, after our carpals, we're going to move up to our uh, metacarpals. So these are five bones per hand, and they're going to uh, frame basically the palms. So these are these bones here. So this is our first metacarpal, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And so we enumerate them in that direction. After that, we're going to have our actual phalanges. So uh, we call these based on uh, their position. And so our proximal one is going to be this bone here. We have a middle phalanx and then a distal phalanx. And all these together make up our actual finger bones, which are our phalanges. Now we have uh, 28 total, 14 per hand. So these are our finger bones. And then we have our thumb as well. Now the thumb actually only has two bones, not three. There's no middle phalanx on the thumb. We just have proximal and distal. Okay, so now we're going to talk quickly about our lower appendages, and then we'll finish with the pelvic girdle. So the longest bone in the human body is going to be the femur right here. And if you ever have a femur fracture, it's actually very dangerous, not because it's the longest bone, but because there's also really important arteries and veins right here in your body. And if you have a femur fracture, you are at risk of uh, severing your femoral artery, which means you could bleed out really, really fast and die. So um, our femur, again, is going to connect to the patella, which is our knee bone, and then here, on the leg, we have two lower leg bones. We have the tibia, which is the larger of the two leg bones, and the fibula right here. Then we're going to go on to our ankle bones, which, similar to our carpals, are going to be grouped together. So we're going to look at those a little bit closer. So similar to the wrist, we're going to have our tarsals, which will collectively be known as the tarsus. And these are going to be the seven bones, 14 total, that are going to make up the ankles. So first we have our first cuneiform, second cuneiform, and third cuneiform. Uh, followed by our cuboid bone here, which is a little bit larger. Here we have our navicular bone, and then this bone here is our talus, and then finally this larger one, which forms more of our heel, whoops, forms more of our heel, this is going to be our calcaneus. Um, and so all of these together are going to form your ankle. After that, we're going to have our metatarsals. So we start here with our first metatarsal, second metatarsal, third metatarsal, fourth metatarsal, and fifth metatarsal for our most um, our smallest toe are going to be our fifth little toe. And then here with our big toe, we're also going to have uh, phalanx again. So we'll have our proximal phalanx and our distal phalanx. And just like the thumb, we only have two bones here, but we have one, two, three on the rest of our toes. So proximal, middle, and distal phalanx um, for our phalanges of the foot or our toes. So again, we have 28 total or 14 per foot. And the toes each have three little phalanges, except for the big toe, which only has two, just like our thumb. Lastly, we're going to look at our pelvic uh, girdle. So this is going to include our coxal bones, which are our pelvic bones. So our hip bone itself is called the ilium. We have the iliac crest here on the top. And then we have our ischium, which is going to be the lowest portion of our coxal bone. Now we also have the portion where our pubic bones are going to join together. So I'll move you guys over here. So we now see right here, this is gonna be our pubis, where our two pubic bones are gonna join at the symphysis pubis. Now in another video, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit closer look at our uh, vertebral column, as well as the bones of the skull, so we can get a closer look at that. But thanks for helping out today, Fred. Say goodbye, goodbye. Stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself.